This show is listener supported. You're listening to Adoptees On, the podcast where adoptees discuss the adoption experience. I'm your host, Haley Radke, and this is a special episode in our healing series where I interview therapists who are also adoptees themselves so they know from personal experience what it feels like to be an adoptee. Today, we're coming back to the topic of grief. Let's listen in. I'm so pleased to welcome to Adoptees On, Janet Nordeen. Welcome, Janet. Thank you, Haley. Great to hear your voice. Janet is a licensed marriage and family therapist who works with foster children who have experienced trauma. Well, I'm so glad to have you back on the show again, Janet. We talked about grief last time and you taught us all about disenfranchised grief and some stages of grief that really are not linear. And we really dove into to that. And now we're going to talk about grief again, but we're going to talk about living through another loss that brings up grief for us again as adults. So do you want to just share a little bit of your story and why this uh, topic is so important to you personally? Yes. So as I shared before, my biological parents met at the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas in 1965, and I was born at the end of 1965 in November. My birth mother had already had five children in foster care, and recently I found out my birth father had three children as well at the time of my birth. So I was able to connect with them or connect with my maternal side of the family using DNA and One evening, it was February 1st, 2017, was the day I came out of the fog when I (laughs) got the message that here's your birth mother's phone number and she's waiting for you to call. A cousin sent sent that to me and I called her. And in the process of our conversation, she was telling me about her life and she was telling me about her children. You know, the five boys, they're in foster care when you were born, which I had already known because I had my non-identifying information. And she said, then I... I got married and I moved to Texas and I had another son and then I had a daughter and I had to place the daughter for adoption. And then she had three more boys after her. And I was so excited because I finally had a sister. I just couldn't even believe it. So she gave me her name because I grew up with one adopted brother. And so I've always wanted to have a sister. So I was really excited. She gave me my sister's name. And in 30 seconds, while I'm still on the phone with her, I'd found her on Facebook and I saw her picture and I was like, it's like looking at myself. (laughs) We looked so much alike. So I sent her a message that evening on Facebook and I said, are you the person that's related to this person that was adopted in this year and this place? And the next morning she wrote back and she said, I'm that person. We must be sisters. And from that moment on, we couldn't talk enough through Facebook Messenger. We spoke on the phone several times and I just, it was a feeling I, you know, and I think those that have found siblings and become close will understand. I just immediately was in love with her. I was so happy that she was going to be part of my life. And fast forward 38 days later, I got a message that she'd passed away and um, my life was devastated. I was so shocked is the only word I can still come up with. It just shocked me. Um, She suddenly died. It wasn't expected. It just, she was gone. One minute she was there and the next day she wasn't. And so I entered this place. It was a new kind of fog. I entered a place that I just hadn't, it was uncharted territory for me. I'd lost grandparents before and you expect that. And I'd lost pets and things like that, but I never experienced such a tragedy as I felt this was. It just, it just was, it was over overwhelming. It's the only thing I can call it. I'm so sorry. I I can't, I can't imagine. I mean, that's like, you found her, you, you found her, you have a sister and you like, Mm -hmm. you don't even have two months. No, 38 days. Mm. So you say you enter this, another fog and like, Mm -hmm. this is like full on grief big time. This is the real deal grief. Like there weren't enough tissues in the house kind of grief. I was home. It was a Saturday afternoon and my, my younger son who was 23 at the time was here and I got this message and I was in my kitchen and he was around and I just immediately sat and he looked at me and he said, 
mom, what's wrong? And I said, my sister is dead. And he just came and he grabbed me and he held me. And, and that was just, I was so thankful he was here because I don't know what I would have done with no one home. And he immediately called other family and they came and they were supportive. Okay. So your sister has been gone a year now. And mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking about it when it was like, this just happened. What, what else do you, yeah. what else do you want to share about your, your story about experiencing grief and, and as an adopted person? Well, I just, I just was felt so cheated. Not only that she was also adopted and never knew that I existed, but she was gone just in that fast. I just, I, I still, you know, a year and a half later, I just, I have a hard time describing that feeling. I just have a hard time with it. Overwhelming, like I said, is the only thing that that makes sense to me. So can you tell us, like, what did that look like for you? you you've you had this shock, your family comes, and then what were the next things that you did? I mean, did people acknowledge that grief from afar, the people that didn't know you person or like, closely close family it's just my adopted parents and i i had a adopted brother but he also has passed away um in 2000 but so the next day i have a close knit group of women that just came to my home and i needed that female energy and they just kind of scooped me up and we spent several hours just talking about my sister and about um who i am as a person and they reminded me you're strong. You've been through hard things before. This is going to be okay. We're going to help you. We're not going to leave your side. My employer was wonderful. They gave me the time that I needed to recoup and kind of get myself together because I do hard work. The trauma work that I do with kids is very hard and it takes a lot out of me emotionally. So they gave me that space. Um, I was able, her family was so gracious in allowing me to come to where she lives and to attend her funeral and to say some words at her funeral that were meaningful to me. And that was so healing. You know, they barely knew who I was. They only knew because of Facebook. We just met each other. And this is going to sound like a crazy thing to say, but I'm so happy there's Facebook. That's how I found everyone. And that's how we've been able to stay connected. And without that platform, none of that would have been possible. So I went to where she was from. I went to the funeral. I was there where she, uh, her final resting place. I took pictures so I can look at those and I can reflect back. But, you know, I still have these moments of grief spurts, I call them. A song can come on the radio that we talked about and I immediately get teary and I uh, break down very easily. Somebody can ask me about my reunion story and I'm very open about it. There's nothing really that I have shame about. Um, There's nothing to be ashamed about in my reunion story. And I tell them about her. I sometimes will see something beautiful like a sunset or a sunrise. And I'm like, wow, my sister would love that. And I think about her a lot. And I try to honor her and things that I do. Any adventure I have, I'm like, yeah, we're doing this together. You know, I really carry her with me. So I don't feel I'm ever going to be over the loss of her. But I can certainly celebrate her in different ways and the ways I'm choosing to live my life. So how do you think experiencing these losses is different for us as Mm. adopted people? Do you think there's a difference? I I do, because we're all we all experience loss from the minute we're born or the minute we're taken away from our biological family. You know, I was removed right at birth. I never was touched by my birth mother. She never even saw what I looked like. I never saw what she looked like. And so that loss is so immediate and we start grieving immediately as soon as we're born. So I think that we have that deep in our bones loss already. So when there's another tragedy, such as the loss of my sister, or there's a typical loss, like a a loved one or a family member, parent, we are going to go deeper because we have just sat in that loss our whole life. From the get-go, there's been loss. Do you think that when we experience a loss like this, that it can bring back the other, mm-hmm. the other loss, like if, especially if we maybe haven't dealt with it? Sure. I think it can get um, very confusing. You know, the, the lines are pretty blurred with, with grief. 
and loss like this, when we've, when we've had a tragic loss, like where do I start and where does the grief start? And is there a space in between? Is, am I the grief now? Or is it over there? Can I put it in the corner? We're just so enveloped in it. It almost, and this might sound odd, but it almost feels familiar because you're used to grieving. So you're like, oh, there's that feeling again. Now I understand what it is. Oh, that's interesting. That's mm. really interesting. Do you think mm-hmm. that um, like a sudden loss like this could bring somebody aware of like their previous adoption losses, like shake them out of the fog, I guess? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. In our last episode, when you taught us about grief, you talked about some of the stages and what can that look like for an adoptee going through another loss as an adult? Well, for me, the stages of grief, as I said before, are definitely not linear. I would probably, I think I'm still in the, the little bit of the depression of grief, you know, the sadness. Actually, I know I am in the sadness because I still, even if I'm not, don't have a trigger reminder, I can think about her and I can get emotional talking to you. I'm feeling emotional about her and just that she's not here. Um, I also lost my birth mother this year and she's not here, but I felt like I've lost my birth mother so many times. I lost her at birth. She initially rejected me. So there was a loss. Then I went to meet her and we had a wonderful afternoon and then I had to leave and there was a loss. So I felt like I lost her over and over again. But meeting my sister, I had her for such a short time and I knew and we had promised we would always be in each other's life. And then she left. So I went through that anger about her leaving. And then I was in denial, you know, that she could even possibly actually be gone. I would go back to Facebook and check. Oh, no, she still says in memory of. So it's just you go through all this confusion. You know, grief is pretty confusing. And I think for adoptees, because we've experienced so much loss, it does get even more confusing. Like, really, where am I? What's going on with me? Um, Am I going to be able to function? Can I get up in the morning and go to work? Am I always going to feel depressed? Is this always going to be my life? And I would say there's hope. There's definitely hope as we're able to heal and talk about the things that we're feeling. If we keep it inside, that's the most damaging thing we can do. Mm -hmm. We talked before in our previous episode on grief about disenfranchised grief. And so we're talking about now a situation where it's not disenfranchised grief. It will be likely be mm-hmm. something that, you know, our friends and family will understand and accept and we'll get the casseroles and we'll get the, mm-hmm. you know, people may come to support us at a, uh, like a memorial service or something. How can that help us accept our disenfranchised grief? Can it? So having people support us through this this grief that they can see, of course, this is a loss. Can sure. can linking that to our initial adoption loss, losing our biological family, can linking that um, help us process that initial grief? This is too. Con- you can just say this is too confusing. And <laughs> <laughs> no, I would hope it would be able to to kind of help us understand and link that we can make the connection. Nobody's going to make it for us. You know, I can't tell you, of course, Haley, you're having this grief because, you know, that's not how it works. We have to recognize it in ourselves. And if we're confused by it, find a helping person that can help us sort it out. I um, had a, have seen a therapist for quite some time that really I processed grief with, and she was an expert in grief. I didn't have to be the, the therapist in the room. She just like held the space for me and helped me figure things out, help me get through that initial shock and then the anger that came afterwards. And really that was a big part of my healing. But I also didn't shy away from telling people how I was feeling. And I think adoptees, we don't feel entitled to share how we feel or we've had our feelings shut off for a long time or we've been told as children we need to be seen and not heard. And I think that's part of the stigma that comes with being adopted because we just don't speak our truth. We haven't learned to speak up for ourselves. So even in grief, we need to ask for what we need. What do we need? What What are the, the next things, especially if you realize like, okay, this is actually going to have a really significant impact on my life. Right. Well, we need to be able to um, 
have healthy coping skills. I wouldn't say alcohol and drugs is a healthy coping, healthy coping skill. We shouldn't be turning to something that's going to alter our emotions when we're already altered. Um, we need to look for things that are, will bring us comfort. If that is laying on the couch and crying and that's comfortable, do it. If you need to be out in nature and that's something that helps you, do that. If you need to um, listen to music, that's a great coping skill. I listened to the same Broadway musical lyric for several weeks that helped me get through because it reminded me that in deep grief, there's been deep love. And that was important to me to remember that this wasn't just somebody that I knew for 38 days and then she's gone and that's okay. Because I deeply loved her and I know that I was loved in return. I needed to honor that. And I think honoring um, also heals ourselves. You know, we need to honor ourselves and our grief, not tell, our, tell ourselves that we need to hurry up and get through this. What are some signs that we might need a little bit more intervention? We might want to book an appointment with a therapist or seek out a grief support group. When we become unable to do things that we normally would do, if we feel like we can't get out of bed, we feel like we can't leave our house, we feel an overwhelming fear that you're going to lose everyone. And we, you know, adoptees, we're wired to feel lost. If it gets to be debilitating, that's when you need to be seeking help. If your anxiety is so big, if your depression feels so big that you're not coping, that's when you can reach out and find someone. And if you feel like you can't use your, leave your house, use uh, telemental health. There's several different options that you can Skype just like we're doing now and be able to see a therapist that way. Mm -hmm. And there's several adoption competent therapists who do uh, consults on video as well. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we're so used to loss, we're experts at stuffing it down <laughs> and we may not have allowed ourselves to grieve for different things, uh, over our lives. You know, maybe we've lost a loved one before and, and didn't really give ourselves permission. How do we acknowledge that and maybe go back and, and we need to heal from those things, right? We can't just keep shoving it all down. Right. What are some symptoms of that? Or how would we know that we've done that? What can we do about that? Like maybe this isn't, we're not talking about a recent loss here. This could be maybe 10 years ago, you lost a loved one, but you just were like, hey, I'm just going to get over it and keep moving forward. I'm going to pull myself up by these two bootstraps and move on. That's right. Because yeah. I'm tough and I don't need to deal with this right now. Yeah. Can you talk to someone that's that's done that? Yeah. I, I say often in therapy is what we resist persists. So it's not going to go away just because we're pushing it down or we're putting it in a box and burying it somewhere else. It's still going to keep coming up. So the sooner we can acknowledge it, oh, you know what? I'm really having a hard time. This is really starting to affect me. The loss of my loved one last week, 10 years ago, is really starting to weigh on me. You know, grief can have other health problems. It affects your breathing. It affects the way your brain processes memories. If you start feeling like you can't remember things, you know, you, I had a time period where I couldn't remember where I put things. I would go into one part of my house looking for something and forget completely why I was there. So grief is an odd, an odd bedfellow to, for lack of a better word. But when you're walking around in that space and that different kind of fog than the adoption fog, it's really important that you acknowledge it and you seek support. Hmm. Okay. I didn't know it could have those side effects. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, when we're grieving, the sensory part of our brain is really affected. And what the sensory part of our brain wants to do is protect us from that grief and protect us from those feelings because it doesn't want to become dysregulated. But so what's really happening is the other parts of our brain are kicking in and they're like, pay attention. Don't you see that I'm having a hard time with deep breathing? Don't you see that I'm having a hard time with my emotional regulation? Can't you feel these physical symptoms you're having? Lots of people have bowel problems and you know all kinds of physical symptoms. So if some of those things are going on with you and there's not a medical reason, possibly looking at the grief that you have experienced is something you should consider. Wow. Okay. I totally did not know that. That's, yeah. wow. Yes. Our bodies are amazing things. Wow. Right. If we're overeating and undereating, that's another symptom too. Okay. Well, that was really interesting. 
Well, thank you so much, Janet. That was that gave me a lot to think about. Things I didn't I really had no idea of. And you know, we never know when we could have an unexpected loss. And then we also don't know maybe something in our past can be affecting us even today. And this is a really good this is a call to action. Maybe just to spend a few mm-hmm. minutes and thinking about is there something that maybe I shove down that maybe I need to think about? Um, right. Yeah. Thank you so much. And is there anything else that you want to share with us about this? Well, just being humans, you know, the price <laughs> for love is loss. It's just part of being human. And if we love deeply, we're going to lose deeply and acknowledge that and be open to whatever comes. Mm. Don't try to avoid something because you're afraid of loss. So good. So good. You're so wise. Thank you. How can we connect with you online? I am on Facebook under Janet Nordine and also on my blog at experiencecourage.com. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Do you love reading? Me too. That's why we have the Adoptees On Book Club. We're starting up right away with a new book that we're discussing. It's only going to be open for a couple of weeks. So come and join us as we tackle a brand new book by a fellow adoptee that you are going to love. So come and discuss with us. You can go to adopteeson.com, find our Facebook page, and click to, there to request to join the Facebook group. This episode was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you love Adoptees On and love our work and are getting value from it, I'd ask you to consider supporting the show today. You can go to adopteeson.com slash partner and find out more details of how you can partner monthly with the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's talk again next Friday.